Marie Eichelberger and I'm iRock Knits on Ravelry and Instagram and I'm super excited to be here today finally after thinking about doing this for literally years. <laughs> I finally decided today was the day. So iRock is Corey spelled backwards on Instagram and Ravelry it's iRock Knits and I go by iRock Knits Designs on my design page on Ravelry. I am going to be using this podcast vlog situation to really talk about my design work and how I have in the last few years decided to take designing on as a profession. <laughs> uh, since I do it in the comfort of my own home, a lot of times in my pajamas, it doesn't seem like it's super professional. But I will be sharing the things that I've learned about design and how to make mostly sweaters uh, fit and flatter you better. I teach all over the Twin Cities metro area, which is where I live in the southwest corner. Uh, pretty far out, uh, not considered by some people to be in the city, so we're kind of a small town called Victoria. Uh, but still considered a suburb to some folks. So I get to uh, fortunate to teach at 16, 17 of our local yarn stores that are all within about an hour to an hour and a half of where I live. I also have been very fortunate to travel to a number of knitting retreats and events uh, in the last probably six or seven years. So I last winter taught in Arizona and Virginia and Colorado and went to events like Rhinebeck and Stitches Midwest, also attended the January Thaw and the Virginia Beach Yarn Getaway. So I really, really fortunate in being able to travel. So uh, I'm gonna be sharing quite a bit of that. And today I decided that I would share my trip to Stitches Midwest and the Atta Girl sweater, which is my newest design that I have from the Leading Men Fiber Arts booth where we spent some time and used their yarn to design. Uh, four of us designers got chosen to use their yarn and be in their booth during Stitches Midwest, so I'll be telling a little bit about that. I also am going to be sharing some information about the book that I wrote with my friend Megan Williams, uh, Minnesota 52, 16 Knits Inspired by the Road, and I will be going through a lot of those designs and what that process was like for us in some of the episodes that I'm going to share here moving forward. So I uh, will tell you a little bit about myself first. Uh, I am probably called myself a knitter for 30 plus years. So I learned how to knit in college, uh, 1983, four. I ended up staying in Mankato, Minnesota for a summer when everyone else went home. And I was kind of lonesome and working at the local newspaper, a really early morning shift. And then I'd be kind of done for the day and didn't have a lot of folks around to hang out with. So I signed up for two community education classes, one beginning knitting and one intro to woodworking. And during that summer, I made a short sleeved sweater and a stereo stand. <laughs> I think both of those items are still in the basement. The stereo stand was just basically a box with some shelves and the sweater is still down there too. So I will get that out and bring it up sometime because um, some of you would have seen it because I took it to the interview we did with Christy Glass at Stitches Midwest a year ago because she always asks everybody when did they start knitting and what was the first project you ever made or something like that. And so I had shared that sweater with her. Uh, and then I didn't knit for a long time. I did some knitting, but mostly I did cross stitch and needlepoint. I, that was really my uh, passion for a number of years when I was first teaching and my roommate that I lived with was very into cross stitch and needlepoint. And then I became a scrapbooker. So in 2001, my husband and I were uh, transferred with his company to the state of Virginia. We lived in Glen Allen, which is a suburb of Richmond. And scrapbooking was huge at the time. And I moved into a neighborhood of women who were really into scrapbooking. And we would spend every Tuesday um, at a woman's house who was a creative memories consultant and we would scrapbook. And so I was knitting through all of that, but not 
not as voraciously as I am today. Uh, I am sorry, I take a medication that causes me to have kind of dry eyes and dry mouth, so I will need to drink a little while I do this, or otherwise you'll all be choking watching me by the end. So you'll have a sympathetic dry mouth syndrome or something. Um, so uh, my knitting really picked up speed then probably in, when I got married and moved to the Twin Cities. I started taking knitting classes because the opportunities were so available here for just about any class you wanted to take. I took knitting with cotton and knitting socks and color work knitting and short rows. Before I even knew what a short row was, I took a short row class and I people would come to town and so we had professional designers and teachers coming that I could take classes from. So I really felt like I was getting an education around around my knitting early on. And then uh, probably four years ago now, my daughter's going to be a senior in college. I turned to Megan in the car on the way to Stitches Midwest and said, my only child is leaving for college and I don't know what I'm going to do with my life. I didn't know if I could be a stay-at-home mom of a college child because then you're not being the mom anymore. <laughs> and uh, so I just really wanted to do something. I didn't know if I wanted to go back to teaching. I was a high school teacher to at-risk students for 17 years. And I said to Megan, I think maybe I want to design and maybe we should write a book and then that kind of snowballed into the book that we ended up finishing two years later. But more of that story in another episode. Um, today, I'm going to share in Corey's stories section, I always have a good story to tell, uh, a little bit about my trip to Stitches Midwest. I was kind of looking forward to getting through my knee surgery this summer and wanted to set a goal um, of going to Stitches Midwest. So I had my left knee replaced at the end of June and I had had a partial knee replacement 14 years ago on the right side, but this was gonna be a total knee and so I knew that the recovery would be a bit longer and a, uh, a little bit more precarious. And so I wanted to set this goal of getting to Stitches Midwest. However, it was five weeks out from my surgery and the doctor and the physical therapist mostly would say, you usually say six to 12 weeks before you're gonna really be up and moving around at full capacity. So we'll just play it by ear and see how it goes. And I was so fortunate to have a group of friends who said to me, we will help you get through it if you wanna try to make it come. So uh, I went to Matt's house uh, on that Thursday morning and he lives in the Twin Cities here, multi-crafty guy and picked up Matt and then we went to Rochester and picked up Megan Williams and then Matt and Megan did a majority of the driving, although I can drive because it's my left knee so it doesn't hasn't really been a huge problem once you get off your med medications, narcotics that you're taking, then you can you get your permission to drive. So I had been driving but not long distances like all the way to Chicago. So Megan and Matt drove over there with us and then we met a group of friends over there. So I'll do a little name dropping here. Carla, Melanie, Stacy, um, Amber, who really took over and helped me make it through. Those, that group of six people um, brought my ice machine to the ice room and filled it up with ice and made sure I was elevating my knee and putting my leg up and sitting down and resting and getting ice for me and I could not have done that trip without him. But the reason that I really wanted to go to Stitches Midwest was because I had a new sweater design going live while we were there. So Steve and Andy had asked Megan and I and Lisa and Stephanie of Lisa of Paper Daisy Creations and Stephanie of Telly Bean Knits and Megan Just Run It to design with their yarn and have a pattern go live at Stitches. And so I knew that my new Atta Girl sweater design would be going live while we were there, but I wanted to be there to see that whole thing happen. I had never singly been asked to design something with someone's yarn before. And so it was kind of an honor and a privilege 
And so I really just wanted to take advantage of that. So Megan and I were in the Leading Men Fiber Arts booth all day on Friday from 10 in the morning till six in the afternoon with our all of our designs. Um, we had some designs from the book there and some other things that we had designed, the, um, the Love Letters Cowl that we did with Stephanie and Lisa, we had on display there. But this was my Add a Girl sweater uh, design. So I wanna talk a little bit about that too today and also about some of the purchases, uh, small purchases and things that we did while we were there. So the first thing that I purchased the very first night was I went to the Stephen B booth because I knew that he had gotten a shipment of Yowza in the Miss Babs uh, colorway garden party and I wanted to be able to sort through all the skeins. So I got three skeins of this. And the Yowza is a light worsted weight yarn and it has 100% superwash merino, 560 yards. So I have plenty to do a long, big cardigan if I would choose to. I love the feel of her yarn and I love that the put-ups are so big, not as many ends to weave in, which is really nice. And so that's the first thing that I wanted to do was I wanted to get over there and get a skein or two or three of the Miss Babs while they had a new shipment. And then the second thing I purchased was seven skeins of this Richard DeVries yarn. I was fortunate enough to go to dinner with Richard uh, one of the nights that we were there and spent some time with him. And I really wanted to take a look at his colors. It's so nice to see those colors in person and really feel like you get uh, to kind of feel it and see what it's like. This is the Je Regret Rien colorway, which means I have no regrets in French. And it is Richard DeVries. And he spells his name R-H-I-C-H-A-R-D. Richard DeVries yarns, and he, that's out of Canada. And I got seven skeins of that. These are smaller put up, so it was a little more affordable per skein for one thing, uh, but they are 80 gram skeins and have 175 yards, and this is worsted weight. So I got seven skeins, probably enough to do a cardigan pullover for myself in this beautiful pink speckled yarn. I think is just fantastic. He dyes in huge dye lots. So all these were the same dye lot. And so I didn't have to worry about making sure that things matched in that situation or not. Then Saturday, we, we spent most of the day shopping up and down all the aisles. Stitches Midwest is a large vendor market. And then we went out to dinner. So we got up on Sunday morning and pretty much took off back to the Twin Cities. It probably takes us about eight or nine hours to get home because, you know, we stop and someone has to go to the bathroom and then you get lunch and then you drop off Megan and then you drop off Matt and then you, you go home the last 40, 40 minutes yourself. So I, you know, we probably left 10 or 11 in the morning and I didn't get home until seven or something that night. So pretty much takes an entire day to get over there on Thursday and an entire day to get back on Sunday. But uh, I really had a wonderful time and came home maybe a little bit more swollen in my knee than when I left, but I saw the physical therapist a couple of days later and she said, you're never gonna know until you try walking that far. And so she has me up to getting out and walking two to six blocks every day and I'm lifting weights with that knee and I have a really good bend already. So um, I was really glad that you know, you can't really do any damage to it anymore. It's titanium, kind of bionic at this point. So let's talk a little bit about the Atta Girl sweater. The sweater was inspired particularly because of the uh, marling that has become kind of a popular trend <laughs> for people to do right now. And I wanted to try doing some marling with a sweater that would work up really quickly. And I think that that is Kind of the key to this sweater is that because you're holding DK weight yarn double on a size nine knitting needle, this one, well, actually both of the samples, my sample knitters both finished the sweaters in less than a week. It just works up really quickly. It's a yarn over knit two together pattern stitch and then knit two together yarn over kind of on the second row um, that offsets that whole mesh stitch. And then look at how stretching this is. 
I mean, you just get all kinds of give. And so the, the, the rows grow dramatically, quickly. And then the raglan shaping is, I kept that in stockinette. So the reason that I did that was because I wanted the mesh stitch to have the sweater be open and airy and perhaps in the longer version, the kind of the tunic length, which is below your hind end, it could have gotten a little heavy. And so with the mesh stitch remaining, keeping everything really open, it allowed me to not only let the sweater grow really quickly while you were knitting it, but also to have it kind of be air conditioned, right? So it's heavy yarn if you're holding DK double, but you open that all up with the, that mesh stitch and it really is not a too heavy of a sweater. Uh, another thing that I did to help with the fact that I thought the Tunic Lake sweater would be perhaps a little bit heavier is that when you start at the upper neck, you are not doing that collar. You come back and pick that up later, which gives you kind of a stabilizing ridge. I've done that before on sweater designs that I felt like might be a little heavy, giving kind of a stabilizing ridge at the neckline to allow some of the weight of that sweater to, to hold on to that and then on your shoulders so it doesn't, it won't drag itself down. So this one, I can, think I can show you here how long this actually is, there we go. So it goes way down. And then this is the shorter or cropped version. And it is only uses four skeins of DK weight in the size, I think this is the 36. So there are two, four, six inches of positive ease in this sweater easily when you block it. You can decide how much stretch you wanna give that actual mesh section and either one of these could be put on someone from a 36 to a 42, 44, very easily because the, the mesh stitch just allows so much forgiveness in the actual fabric of the sweater. So you measure your stockinette stitch gauge and then kind of go from that and see what you do. And then you pick up the button bands up the front on either one. I have beautiful, fun, can you see those buttons on this one? They're very sparkly. Those were Andy's favorite in the booth, he kept saying, maybe I should give Andy a button like this for Christmas, um, that he really liked how that button worked up there. And then on this one, this is a green on green. I put yellow buttons on it, and I think it works well because I had the yellow dress. I don't think I would have done that because it really isn't yellow. It looks uh, from a distance like that's a green and yellow, but it really is more of a green on green and so both sweaters are available in the pattern and that's called the Add a Girl sweater. And one of the reasons that I decided to name it the Add a Girl sweater, here's a little story for you. Back in the early 80s, my husband was working for a company in their IT department and they would be given attaboys uh, when something went well or a new project had gone, you know, was successful. And so they would give out an attaboy and it always graded me a little bit. Now, I know that there were not a lot of women working in the IT areas in 1984, but I just always thought that it should be called Atta Girl too. And so I've always had that as a little prick in the back of my neck that there should be things that are Atta Girl. And so um, when I wrote the romance copy it's the paragraph that you write when you talk about the inspiration that you got for a sweater. I told a little story about um, how my daughter had opened my eyes to some new forms of discrimination. Race discrimination was kind of the, you know, the call in the 60s and 70s and, and, and currently today, but now there are all other kinds of discrimination that we're seeing. And, um, and so she's really opened my eyes as a mother and a woman to some of the things that we probably need to be looking a little harder at. And I don't want to get political here at all, but I do want to say that women supporting women is probably my favorite thing in the entire world. <laughs> I love when women support other women and um, lift them up. And I have a knitting group here in the Twin Cities that is uh, probably 18 women and one guy, Matt, and um, the way that we have connected over the 12 or 13 years that we have been knitting together, um, regardless of politics or religion or 
socioeconomic background is just so uplifting to me. And so I just wanted that sweater and that mesh stitch and all that connectedness of cross hatching and being together to be a part of the, the Atta Girl sweater and uh, the women that, that are in my life that support me and uh, lift me up when I, when I need lifting. Okay, just a couple more things about the Atta Girl cardigan. It'll give you a really strong vertical line straight up and down, which is elongating and makes us look thinner and sometimes even a little bit taller. So whether or not you close it or leave it open doesn't really matter so much because that button band can be your vertical line or the actual opening can be your vertical line that goes straight up and down. And then the other thing that I want to just briefly touch on is you know what you like better, a tunic length or a cropped length. So going into this sweater, you already know what you like to wear. If you like things to hit you right at the high hip or just below, you know that that cropped length is for you. And if you're taller perhaps, or you have a long torso, there are different reasons for why you might like something longer or shorter on your body, but you're wearing clothes every day that you like the way you feel good in, or at least you are comfortable in those. So making that decision on the longer or the shortest length that you can do is really up to you and you know which will best fit you or suit you. If you haven't ever had anybody talk to you about where things should hit you, then get together a group of friends and put on different sweaters and say to one another, okay, which looks better on me? And at least if you get an honest opinion or feedback from someone, you have a better idea of where things flatter you most definitely. So that's another thing that I really like about this sweater is that you've got a couple of different lengths. It's very heavy on the positive ease, so you can definitely stretch it and make it a little more oversized if that flatters you. But if you need something that's a little more trim fitting, you can do that as well by just leaving that mesh stitch a little more textured and not as quite as open upon blocking. The other thing that you can also do with this sweater is you can knit it in a solid. You do not have to do the marled. You could use a Aran weight or a bulky weight yarn as a single, or you can take some DK weight skeins that you have around the house and use those. Met matching up colors, you could stripe it. I mean, there are lots of options here. So don't just look at it as a very limiting, oh, I have to marl this sweater because it was knit marl to begin with. I sometimes think we get in that rut a little bit, thinking that we have to go with what the photo or the picture says. I think that's all I have to talk about about the sweater today. Uh, probably my earrings, because <laughs> I wear these a lot and people stop me and ask me, especially knitters, if I wear them at a knitting event. These are little felt wheels that are by Zany Crafts, handmade fiber creations. And there's another little pair on a big pair of hoops and these are just on little hook earrings. But they're super lightweight. They come in all different colors. So Z-A-N-I-E Crafts on Etsy. And I have orange and Raspberry, raspberry is kind of the color of the day around my house these days. Raspberry, raspberry, <laughs> oh my goodness. Raspberry, kind of raspberry on my water bottle. So this is my I Rock Knits Love water bottle. And I got that off of Smitten in a Mitten on Etsy. She uh, cuts out those little peel off, rub on, letters and you can get them for your Ravelry name or your company logo I think. She does kids names. She has all the different colors of the Camelback bottles and really I mean I've had this one for gosh probably a year and it's not peeling or I mean I don't put it in the dishwasher a lot. I We just kind of rinse them and wash them in the sink but uh, another raspberry thing that I have going on there. So Smitten in a Mitten on Etsy has the Camelback bottles with the uh, little logos and you can have her do your Ravelry name or your Instagram name or your company name or whatever uh, for your water bottle. I just want to thank all of you for checking out this rambling podcast. It's kind of who I am. It's kind of the way I navigate life is just by talking my way through it. So I don't know that I'll do a lot of editing this first time. I just kind of wanted to practice, try and get it out there, see if I had something to say, see if I could talk a little bit about my designs. Um, I really want to thank Steve and Andy for the opportunity 
to use their yarns, which are wonderful. That Dramaturg DK is just really love their DK. It's absolutely amazing. And uh, hopefully we have gotten a little bit of an introduction here and you've heard a little bit about Stitches Midwest and you've seen a little bit of the yarn that I bought and I talked a little bit about where I learned to knit and how that works for me. So I just wanna say thank you so much for joining me and until next time, keep it colorful.